What is up, everybody? As you guys know, the iPhone XS Max and iPhone XS have been released. If you did not know that, please go read a dictionary because, you know, we all should know that by now, honestly. And for those people who have an iPhone 8 Plus or who found a really good deal on an iPhone 8 Plus and don't know whether you want to get an 8 Plus or an iPhone XS Max, or if you don't know whether you want to upgrade, why is this intro so long? This video is basically for you. And surprisingly, I mean, I'm pretty conservative or liberal when it comes to this stuff. I look at it very practically. I don't really go out like, I'll tell you like this, okay? If you have the money to spend, if you have unlimited your parents or your daddy or your baby daddy's paying for your phone or something, go for the iPhone XS Max. Like, it's gonna last you longer. It is overall better phone, I guess. But you also have to remember that the iPhone XS Max is very, very expensive. So if, if you're not in a very good situation where you can spend that much money or someone can't spend that money on you, then it's also very important to look at competitors. And one of the competitors of the iPhone XS Max is the iPhone A+. Now starting off, the dimensions of these phones are pretty similar, okay? The iPhone XS Max is just a little bit bigger, and the main example I can come up with this is basically if you have an iPhone 8 Plus case, forget the buttons and all those stuff, if you put it on the iPhone XS Max, it won't fit snugly. It's going to be a little bit tight around everywhere if you can even get it on. I understand the buttons and everything, but I'm just saying that's kind of the size difference. You can probably squeeze into it, but it's not really going to work out that well. The screen size is the biggest difference, though, as you guys know, the iPhone XS Max has this 6.5 inch Super AMOLED screen where the iPhone 8 Plus has a 5.5 inch IPS panel. And technically speaking, the iPhone XS Max does have a higher resolution screen. And there's also higher PPI, so there's 458 pixels per inch on the XS Max where there's only 401 on the iPhone 8 Plus. And there's really no competition here. The iPhone XS Max screen is much better than the iPhone 8 Plus and rightfully so. I mean, it's a very good AMOLED panel. It's not the best. I talked about it in my XS Max 4 review that I think the Note 9 has a better screen. But the iPhone 8 Plus' screen, I mean, it gets the job done. It's not horrible or anything like that, but I mean, it's a 1080p panel, which is far better than what the iPhone XR had, if you think about it. But yeah, in terms of the size and everything, they're going to feel pretty much the same in your hand. You also have no headphone jacks on both. The main difference here is they both have glass on the back and they both have wireless charging as well. So none of that really changes here. Now, another difference actually within the phone kind of, and I guess the outside too, is that the iPhone 8 Plus had IP67 dust and water resistance, so it's only one meter for 30 minutes. So if you drop your phone in the toilet or in the sink or probably even in a bathtub, you will probably be good to go. Whereas on the iPhone XS Max, you have IP68 dust and water resistance up to two meters for 30 minutes. So that kind of doubles the amount of distance you can do. It doesn't double the amount of time. So they kind of did the example, if you throw your phone in a pool, you'll be able to use that phone perfectly fine as long as you brush it off a little bit, you know, get some of the water out. What I want is I want a phone that can like fully go underwater and like me not having to worry about like it dying or something. I think we're getting pretty close to it. But in that aspect is a really cool upgrade in that, in my opinion. Now, a humongous difference between these two phones is that obviously the XS Max is one year newer, so that means it's going to theoretically have one more software update than the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, the only reason I could probably see the iPhone 8 Plus going one more year is because it is the last iPhone to have a home button. So maybe they'll extend it out, but at the same time, I can see them keeping it the same length. So start off getting iOS 11, it's getting iOS 12, 13, 14, 15, and maybe 16. I honestly don't think it's going to get 16, but it'll probably stop at 15. Whereas on the iPhone XS Max, I mean, it's just getting started with software updates. So in that aspect, I mean, that's a huge advantage for the XS Max, but at the same time, it's also way more expensive, so you kind of have to keep that in mind. Now, in terms of the performance, this is pretty interesting because I think both phones run very, very well. The iPhone 8 Plus has the Apple A11 Bionic chip, a hexa-core processor, and 3 gigabytes of RAM, where the iPhone XS Max has the Apple A12 Bionic chip. It also has a hexa-core processor, but it has one extra gigabyte of RAM, so it has four gigabytes of RAM on the XS Max, and honestly, both phones run perfectly fine. I mean, I don't really notice that big of a difference. I will show speed tests and speed comparisons in like 20 seconds after that I'm done talking, but I mean, obviously the iPhone XS Max is going to be faster, and it should be faster. I would be more mad if the iPhone XS Max wasn't faster and you're spending that much more money on it, but at the same time, I just don't think the iPhone 8 Plus is slow or completely unusable or anything like that. And if you're looking at it from a performance standpoint, not the way these phones look or anything, I would say like the iPhone 8 Plus is about 90% of what the iPhone XS Max is in terms of performance. Now, if you plan on heavy gaming, like you're going to do all your gaming on just your phone, then maybe getting in XS Max would be better just because the screen is bigger and it also has updated speakers. So your media 
quality, I guess, will go up because you'll be more engaged because the speakers are louder and everything. But at the same time, I just don't think there's a humongous difference between these phones in terms of speed. And one problem I had with the 10s Max kind of was that the phone is just so fast and powerful. And so when you go to play a game like Nova or Real Racing 3, what they do in the background is in those games is that they benchmark your phone. And if they see you're using like a huge, amazing phone, they usually up the graphics a little bit or a lot, depending. So there's different graphics settings. And it's the same thing on Nova. So when you do that, you're usually set on, on the iPhone XS Max and the iPhone 8 Plus, you're set onto the highest settings. And sometimes that does kind of cause glitching here and there, but it's really not that big of a deal. But it's kind of important to note that just because it can affect you in different situations. I mean, if you have a really, really, really intensive game and there's different graphic settings, I mean, it could affect you. But if you're playing Fortnite or something like that, like it's not going to matter. Now, in terms of the camera setup, there's really not too much different here. I mean, there is a difference, don't get me wrong, but from a bird's eye view and even from just like a regular view, not even from a bird's point of view, these cameras are both very, very good. The iPhone 8 Plus has two 12 megapixel cameras and the iPhone XS Max has two 12 megapixel cameras as well. Now, one huge advantage that I could see is that the iPhone XS Max has optical image stabilization on both sensors on the back where the iPhone 8 Plus does not. Is it a big deal? Not really. I mean, like, I don't really use my iPhone camera. Like, I don't expect too much from it, honestly. I go to take a photo and video and then I'm done. I know a lot of people do a lot of photography and stuff with their camera. And if that's the case, then definitely the Tennis Max camera is better. You have not only do you have smart HDR, but you do have that new bokeh effect where you can blur the background a little bit more. But you can also do that on third party apps on the iPhone 8 Plus. So if you're, that's really important to you, then you can always go to the app store and pick up those apps. I honestly don't know what they're called. And another interesting thing is that video resolutions for both these phones are exactly the same. So you can shoot 4K at 2430 and 60 frames per second. And you can also shoot 1080p videos at 30, 60, 120, and 240 frames per second. So there was not an upgrade here. I don't know if anybody would want to shoot anything higher than 240 frames per second on 1080p, but at least you have that option. Another kind of interesting advantage is that with the front camera, it's still the same 7 megapixel sensors on both. But on the iPhone 8 Plus, we were only able to shoot 1080p at 30 frames per second. But on the iPhone XS Max, we were able to shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second. So a little bit of difference there. I do think 60 frames per second is the move, is the new wave, and it's going to take over. So I think 30 frames per second is going to be done in like a couple of years. It's not going to be done, but like people are going to full on switch. Then I'm going to switch to 60 frames in a second too, but I guess we'll see what happens, but... Now, interesting thing is that battery life is actually better on the iPhone XS Max, and I wasn't really expecting that just because the phone is technically more powerful and it has a bigger screen and a brighter screen and all that good stuff. But because they put a bigger battery in it this time, thank God, Apple, thank you so much for putting a bigger battery. Well, this is the first time we've seen an iPhone XS Max. Hopefully, they don't cut it short next year, but in terms of the milliamp hours and the sizes, we have a 2,691 milliamp hour battery on the iPhone 8 Plus and a 3,174 milliamp hour battery on the iPhone XS Max. And overall, yeah, battery life is better on the iPhone XS Max, even though it has a bigger screen and all that stuff. And it really has to go hand in hand with the battery size. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, it matters more on the chipset or this or that. But this is proof. I mean, the iPhone XS Max is higher spec, has better screens, has better this and that. It has a bigger battery. It's able to last longer. I mean, it's not too difficult to understand, but I totally see where you guys are coming from because sometimes you can't have a better chipset that optimizes the power and everything like that to get better battery life. But in this case, not really. I'm really glad they did that. But but like I said, both these phones have Qi wireless charging. So if that's something you're into, you have that option. But overall, battery life isn't horrible on the iPhone 8 Plus, but the 10s Max is better. Now, some other notable things to note. Obviously, these phones look completely different on the front. You don't have a home button on the iPhone XS Max. You substitute basically Touch ID for Face ID. And apparently, Face ID did get an upgrade here, but I don't, honestly, I don't see it. I like, I still think it messes up just as much. It still has some trouble here and there, but I mean, if it increased, then that's perfect. But I don't really see it, but that's totally okay. I, I'm not expecting like crazy upgrades in Face ID. Probably next year we'll see Face ID too, but. I definitely like the way the iPhone XS Max looks over the iPhone A+. Plus. You also have the new stereo effect on the iPhone XS Max like I talked about earlier. The front earpiece speaker and the bottom facing speaker are louder now, so that's really cool if you want to be more immersed in your gameplay or whatever media, uh, you have that option. The iPhone XS Max comes in more storage sizes than the iPhone 8 Plus. So on the iPhone 8 Plus, you can only do 64 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes. While on the iPhone XS Max, you have 64, 256, but you also have the 512 gigabyte new version. So if you want a half a terabyte iPhone XS Max, you have that option. And that's freaking awesome. My iPhone 10, my daily driver is 64 gigs and I actually have to upgrade. I keep forgetting to do it, but it's pretty crazy. Like, like 64 gigs used to be so much back in the day, but now it's like nothing. Now I'm gonna break down some scenarios, okay? If you have an iPhone 8 Plus right now, should you go and upgrade to the iPhone XS Max? I will say don't, okay? Just keep your iPhone 8 Plus. 
it is definitely an upgrade, the iPhone XS Max is, but I just think that it's just kind of like more of the same, and I kind of related this to a little bit of the iPad situation, the iPad dilemma, where people said, oh, it's just like a bigger version of the iPad, this and that, or it's just a bigger version of the iPhone, this and that, and I think this is kind of the same way, like the iPhone XS Max really doesn't bring anything that we haven't seen before. Maybe battery life is a huge advantage. The OLED screen is beautiful, but I just don't think it's really that big of an upgrade, like honestly. It is definitely a better phone. It's definitely 100% better. I'm not saying it's not better, but I'm just saying that for the price tag, I believe it's $1,100 or $1,200 for the base model. I mean, you can pick up an iPhone 8 Plus for like $300, $400, and that's like a third or fourth of the price. And I just don't see it. I mean, it's not a three or four times better of a phone. It's, it's really not a worthwhile upgrade in my opinion. Now here's another situation. Let's say you don't have an iPhone 8 Plus, you don't have an iPhone XS Max, but you want to pick one out of the two. I will say this, okay? Get an iPhone 8 Plus, get a really good deal on it, try to get the best deal ever, and then wait a year, use that phone for as long as you want to, wait a couple months, the iPhone XS Max is gonna go down in the resale value, and I would just pick up a used iPhone XS Max. It's probably gonna go down to around $900, less than a thousand. So you can save yourself about $300. You can go and sell your phone, the iPhone 8 plus for hopefully more than you bought it for because it already depreciated and then pick up a tennis max and then literally spend no money and save yourself like three, $400 potentially. That's what I would do if I was in a situation where like I could not afford it at all or anything like that. And I really wanted one, but I think as a whole, you could even use an iPhone 8 plus for like another year and not be like mad about it. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it at. I think the iPhone 8 Plus is a very good phone. I think the iPhone XS Max is 100% a better phone, but I don't think it's like three to four times better according to the prices. And that is pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, leave it down in the comment section below. Hit that like button, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber we get really does count, so it'll mean so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel, all that stuff is down there. I would really appreciate if you guys could check it out. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out to them.